Welcome to our Research Like a Pro with DNA Q&A series. How do I paint my ancestry, DNA, ethnicity, and inheritance in DNA Painter? Well, this is a really neat new feature that we're going to go through and give you a little example. So to start out, I thought I would show you my new ethnicity estimate. It's the latest as of June 2022. And you can see that I have got mainly, you know, European ancestry. I've got this England, Northwestern Europe, and then 11% Swedish Denmark, then some Scotland, Wales, Norway, and Ireland. So my paternal side is colonial United States. And so I have not traced all of those lines back to Europe. I have a few of those traced back, but my maternal line is fairly recent, mid 1800s, England and Sweden. So we're going to work a little bit with my Sweden and Denmark lines. So I can show you some things that can be done with this idea of painting ethnicity estimates. So just to introduce you to my maternal line, let's start with my great grandmother. Mary Margaret Peterson was full Danish. She came with her family in, well, actually her parents came over from Denmark in the 1850s and she was born in the United States, but she was full Danish. Then her daughter, my grandmother is half Danish and half English. Her father was full English and also was um, one that was a child of immigrants from England. My mother is quarter Danish and then her three quarters, English from her other side, which were all also English immigrants in the 1850s, which makes me an eighth Danish. And so half of my genome comes from these recent English Danish immigrants, and the other half is all 1600s, 1700s, um, early colonial immigrants. So it gives you just a little bit of an overview of my Danish ancestry. So supposedly I would have about 12.5% Danish if I inherited the right amount and everybody else inherited that amount. But as you know, that that can sometimes be a little bit random, but I am getting pretty close on my ancestry estimate. So you can see here it was 11%. That's getting closer. All right, so now we have a new feature on Ancestry DNA, which is ethnicity inheritance. And this is the new side view technology that breaks our genome into two halves, our side one or side two. <clears throat> and I do know which one is paternal, which one is maternal. So I have given those the label. So they do show up now as paternal and maternal. And just know you don't have to have a parent tested to get this. I do have my mother tested at Ancestry, and it was easy for me to see because my two uh, lines do split very easily into the two halves. It wasn't hard for me to determine which was which. But if you don't know that, then you can do some more sleuthing in your DNA and try to figure out which one is paternal and which one is maternal. Now, also, when you look at your ethnicity estimate, you can go ahead and select any of the regions, more than one if you want. Right now, I've got all of them selected. And then you can see where your different regions come from. Do you have them both from paternal, maternal, or just from one or the other? And so when I select just the Sweden and Denmark, I see that it actually does appear on both my paternal and maternal lines. I have no idea where that comes from on my paternal line. I do know where it comes from on my maternal line. So that obviously that 11% I have isn't strictly all from my Danish great-grandmother. Some of it is from my father's line. So it's always good to know that these are just estimates and they may change, but we're starting to get a little bit better idea of what our genome looks like with the ethnicity regions. Now, when you scroll down a little bit on the page of your Ancestry DNA inheritance page, you also see it broken up by percentages. And here you see of my 11%, I have just, they estimate 7% on the maternal, 4% on the paternal. But the exciting new feature is that you can now see where ethnicities appear in your DNA and on your chromosome map. And this comes in and 
many different versions. You can change the versions. Right now I have everything selected, but you can change it to show just your paternal or just your paternal lines. And then you can filter by any of the regions. And over here, I've got all the same regions shown. They each have a different color. And so I can select which ones I want to show. And so you see when I do that, then I have just Sweden and Denmark showing up. And I also have selected just maternal. I want to try to see where those Danish segments are on my maternal line. So you'll see I have a pretty large one here on chromosome two, and then I have a really nice long segment down on 15, 17, and 18. But then I also have some paternal chromosomes here. Now they don't, um, they don't say that this is absolutely certain and that this is not going to change. This isn't beta testing, it's an estimate, but it is starting to give us an idea of where we might be able to find some ancestors by looking at ethnicity. Now, of course, this is going to work better if you have your ethnicity maybe a little bit more varied than all England and Northwest Europe. And so because I have this little bit of Swedish, it makes it a little bit more fun for me because I have something I can actually look at. Now let's switch over to DNA Painter. And on DNA Painter, for a few years now, I've been working on my chromosome map. And you'll see that I have quite a few different things painted here. All of these colors show that I have painted in a chromosome from a DNA match that I actually know where I, we share DNA. And I have painted in 207 segments. This is from 23andMe, MyHeritage, and GEDmatch, where we get segment data. So when I find a match on one of those uh, testing companies or the third party company GEDmatch, I will, I will paint that into my map. So my map is getting better. And you'll see that I have 46% of my genome represented. And when you paint in a match, you get to give them a name. And so I have started putting in ancestral couples. So I have Mary Margaret Peterson. She's my Danish ancestor. She married Charles C. Creer, who is English. So the red segments are from this couple. Are all the red segments going to be Danish? Not necessarily because he's English. And so we don't know, I don't know, whether it's going to represent my English or my Danish part of that couple. So this is one of the things that we really have to think about, that we have to um, maybe go back a further generation to find a Danish match. And at this point, I don't have anybody from Mary Margaret Peterson's parents that would be for sure a Danish match. And so I only have matches that come through them or their children. So it's showing me that I have some work to do, but you can see I have quite a few reds and on DNA Painter, I can select just the reds, just all of those who match me through Charles and Mary Peterson career. And so I have separated out here, um, all of those matches and then in gray, this little grayed out part. These are shared matches with my mother's first cousin. This would be another granddaughter of Mary Margaret Peterson. And so Kathleen and my mother are both deceased, but they were first cousins. And of course, they both got DNA from this couple, Charles and Mary. So they both have the English and the Danish. So notice over here, I've got Kathleen matching me. She actually matches in a lot of different places. And so these other red matches are other cousins. They're my first cousins who are also coming down through those lines. So we can start to get an idea of where we might have inherited some of our ancestors' DNA. Now, one of the neat things we can do with this new uh, ancestry DNA ethnicity ethnicity estimate chromosome painting is we can paint that into DNA Painter and start doing some comparison. So how do you do this? Well, I'm going to show you how simple it is. So you open up your ancestry DNA chromosome painter, just like I showed you what I had open, and then you just click on the page anywhere on the page and you press control A if you're using a PC or command A on a Mac, and that selects all the text. And then you use control C or command C on a Mac and copy it to your computer's clipboard. And then you would open up DNA Painter 
And it's a special page, dnapainter.com slash tools slash ACPS. And then you're going to paste that in there. So what does it look like when you have selected your whole page, when you've done the control A or command A? Well, you'll see all these different things highlighted here. And it's, it's usually highlighted in blue, but the screenshot shows it being in gray. And then you'll know you have that all highlighted. And when you go to that website on DNA Painter, you just have the little paste here and you use your control V or command V to paste in. And then you will get this screen that says it has extracted the segments and it wants to know what you want to do. Do you want to download your segments or do you wanna create a new chromosome map? So I did both. I have downloaded the segments and I have created the new, the new chromosome map. You can also add this info to an existing map. So if you want to put it into a map you already have, you could do that. I chose to make a separate map just because I wanted to see it just by itself rather than putting it into my main map. So when I put it into DNA Painter, it looks just like the chromosome map I had in Ancestry. Now, you might wonder why you would want to do this when you can see the same information in Ancestry, but on DNA Painter, you can do quite a few different things with this. So you can rename any of these. So for instance, we have, you know, the different Scotland, Wales, maternal, paternal. If you wanted to rename those by ancestral couples, you could do that. You, under settings, you can do quite a few different things to manipulate this data. And so it can be really a great thing to put this into DNA Painter and then be able to use it however you would like to use it. Now, I want you to notice something here. Chromosome 2 is where I was matching my cousin Kathleen, who comes down through um, our shared ancestral couple, Mary Margaret Peterson and Charles Cannon Creer. This shows my Danish segment to be over here on the left, but I shared with her this segment on the right. Now, this gives me a hypothesis. I'm hypo hypothesizing that because this is showing as English and not Danish, that that bit of DNA that we share is on the career side, our English side. And that can be a really fun thing to start exploring because honestly, we can have confirmation bias about what we receive or what um, what bits of our genome we're matching with on with our DNA matches. And so this was interesting for me to see that our Danish line, my Danish line was over here and not right here, with I, which is where I thought it probably was. So lots of things to unpack once we start comparing. We can also download our segment data into an Excel spreadsheet. And then once there, you can sort. And so here I have it sorted and here are all my different segments that have that Sweden and Denmark that I can take if I would like and paste maybe just these into my main chromosome map and then compare. And so there's a lot of fun things we can do with this. How do we use this? Well, compared to existing matches, and as I showed you, maybe it'll help you to separate out a segment that you share with a match to either the mother or the father. I now know that that part that I uh, match with my cousin Kathleen is actually a career match and not a Peterson match because it doesn't show Danish. Or is that confirmation bias? Perhaps I need to be careful and add some more data to that, which is what we do when we're working with our DNA. We can also get clues about mystery matches. So if I have someone I just do not know, and I have a pretty good chromosome map, and I have some good ethnicity estimates in there, if they're going to be helpful, I could get some clues. And then as I showed you, we can separate segments between an ancestral couple if we have enough information. Of course, if we have just a very broad a European ancestor and we don't have anything as specific as what I've shown you here, that's going to be really difficult using, using ethnicity. But if you have anything in your DNA, say Native American, African American, or um, Native American from a specific area in South America, you know, some of those kind of segments with ethnicity you could really start using to help you determine a mystery match or to make comparisons to existing matches.
So hopefully you can see how easy it is to do this painting. And Johnny Pearl has written a great blog post and it's on his blog. It's called New Ancestry DNA Chromosome Painter Segments. He walks you through exactly how to do this and gives you some ideas about how to use that in your own research. And so good luck everybody and have fun experimenting with painting your chromosomes.